Haplogroup J has also been found among ancient Egyptian mummies who were excavated um, in Middle Egypt. For people with Southern Italian ancestry, this might be a path for you to take. Is most common people of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern North African heritage. Hi, I'm Danielle Romero. Thank you so much for being with me here on my channel where we've been talking about American identity and hidden history and what makes us Americans. And I have been looking into my dad's side of the family a little bit. Um, the channel started out with my mom's side of the family, uh, you know, it's Creole, Irish, Mexican. Um, I thought my dad's side was pretty like obvious. Like he's, you know, we, he said he was Italian. Um, his family came over from Italy um, in the 1900s. I mean, they really haven't been here very long. And I thought that was kind of just like a closed book. I didn't need to dig in. Well, when you're studying family history, nothing should be taken for granted. Even things that you think you know, you should still look into it. So when my dad had taken his DNA test, I've talked about this a little bit on here, um, and my mom took it and I had taken it. And this was back when I did 23andMe and I ended up deleting the 23andMe uh, stupidly uh, a couple years ago and I really regret it. But I took a couple of screenshots of some stuff, which I'm really glad for. And my dad had given me about 15% North African, Egyptian, and Iranian, which was really shocking because my dad is like, he's the Italian guy. Like he loves being Italian. He's Italian. And I thought that's a lot because that would have made him about 30%. And I'm like, okay, that's a, that's a, that's a lot to have show up unexpectedly. And you know, both his parents were his parents. Um, you know, there was, we had no question about that. His brother took a DNA test. They matched his full brothers. But I wanted to dive in a little bit into my dad's haplogroup because the haplogroups, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I think I understand it. Then I start reading about it and I'm like, I think I need a little bit of help here. Um, a group that is pointing to common ancestors and it's passed down um, like the maternal haplogroup is something that, you know, all the women in the family are getting like all the way back to a single ancestor. And so I've talked about my mom's on here and my grandmother's um, because it was it was a C1C and that, that really matched with some of the paper trail work I've done. It was indigenous to the Americas. Well, my dad, when he took it, he has two groups show up and this is where things get a little bit uh, uh, like confusing for me because I am not a genealogist. I am not a genetic genealogist. Like I'm just a person trying to understand where my family came from. So that being said, um, I wanted to share my dad's haplogroups because when, when your dad takes it, there's his maternal one will show up, but also his paternal one shows up and his maternal one wasn't that surprising to me. His paternal one, gave me pause and so I wanted to share it with you and uh, tell you what I found about it and I think especially for people with southern Italian ancestry this might be a path for you to take. So um, I will pop it up on the screen but basically his maternal haplogroup was H1N and this is literally a screenshot from my the 23andMe test from like 10 years ago. But the haplogroups don't change. They don't update the way that the ethnic groups do. Like these are pretty much, uh, we can count on these. So the H1N I was researching and basically the regions they had for this was um, Near East, Central Asia, Africa. Like it, it could go anywhere, but I think the consensus for H1N, which was his mom's haplogroup uh, is European. But his dad's haplogroup was really weird and long. Uh, and it looked like it had a lot of extra bells and whistles on it. So I had to look into it. So his haplogroup was J2A1B. I don't know, that little extra B added a lot. But the J haplogroup is really interesting. And so, um, actually I would say the J2 haplogroup. And what I found that the, the J2 haplogroup is basically the Fertile Crescent 
Um, that's one of the things that has always stuck out uh, from my like eighth grade education was learning about Mesopotamia and the Fertile Crescent. I don't know why, it just kind of always stuck with me. But it looks like paternal haplogroups that correspond to J2, J2A1 um, are very typical in Southern Italian Mediterranean people, but that they're actually, um, yeah, it's a Middle Eastern haplogroup. And it seems to uh, focus a lot in Iran and North Africa and Egypt, which based on the original test that we took, that made a lot of sense. Then when the test updated and it went back to just being broadly Southern Italian for my dad, um, you know, but the haplogroup stays the same. And the thing about these tests that I don't love is my understanding is it's not so much that it's looking at your DNA and able to parse it out like that, but it's looking at groups of people who live in regions and saying, uh, a lot of people in this region, you match the most DNA with them. And so it would make sense that he would have this broadly Southern Italian DNA match, but that's not really telling us uh, the origin story. Okay, so I'm on Wikipedia right now. Is this gonna be 100% accurate? Nope. But I think it's gonna be the e easiest way to kind of uh, just go through this information. So haplogroup J, uh, the distribution is what I want to look at. And it says that the frequency uh, today is highest in the Near East. So it's a Middle Eastern DNA followed by Europe, the Caucasus, North Africa. Um, and J2, which is my dad's, is more localized around the Mediterranean, Greece, Italy, Sardinia, and Spain, which makes a ton of sense uh, based on our uh, lineage. Haplogroup J has also been found among ancient Egyptian mummies who were excavated. Um, in Middle Egypt, which is interesting. Uh, also the Canary Islands. Uh, so I think that's bringing in the Spanish. My dad and I were talking while he was here for Christmas um, because I had to go get some, some lab work done. I have always struggled with anemia um, and had issues relating to that. Uh, I will often, um, I don't love eating meat. Like I do eat meat, but it's just not something I crave a lot. Like I could live on beans and rice and cheese. Like I could live on that. Uh, and pico de gallo, but I don't eat a ton of meat. And so I already have a tendency to be anemic and I know it starts getting bad when my nails start getting brittle and I, I start looking a lot lighter than normal and kind of gray, um, which, so anyway, I, I was noticing that about myself again. I went to the doctors and I was talking to my dad about because I had to get my blood drawn again and I'm still waiting to hear back. My dad's like, well, we have thalassemia. I was like, what? Like, and I'm suddenly thinking, I do remember this, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember what it was. Um, and he said that he does, and two of my siblings definitely have it. And he's guessing that um, more of us do. But thalassemia, there's like a really dangerous one, which is not the one we have. And then there's one that is uh, more frequently, it's more common and less dangerous. Um, but it has to do with your ancestry for the most part. So it's called beta thalassemia. Um, and it's an inherited blood disorder where the body doesn't make as much beta globin as it should. Um, basically your red blood cells are a messed up shape and you don't get as much oxygen and issues with iron and all that. So my dad has that, two of my siblings do. I'm thinking that I probably do but what I wanted to talk to you about was um, ancestry. So I was reading about it over break and uh, beta thalassemia is most common people of Mediterranean and Middle Eastern North African heritage, which again, I feel like this is, this is kind of where I find um, the genetic genealogy stuff to be fascinating because I really focus on the family story side. I think uh, I love just getting in the dirt and, and, and hearing the, the stories of people surviving and, and making it and all of these things. But there's this other side to this study and it is the genetic side of uh, traits that are inherited, traits that um, you could anticipate having based on your heritage. And so um, for beta thalassemia, uh, it's something that if my dad hadn't mentioned it, I don't think I would have thought to bring it up to my doctor. It's just interesting for me to see uh, kind of the confirmation with his DNA test and his haplogroup. And so 
thankfully this is not something that is like life or death um but it is something that you would want to know that you have so that you can uh, make adjustments in your life so it, it was really interesting to just see um so much of that i remember also with my dad's test he had like trace amounts of iran and india show up like i'm talking almost nothing but it did show up and i think it must have something to do with uh the connection through this paternal haplogroup so if this is something you know a lot about please let me know what direction should i go with this it was just super interesting um, and let me know if you have gotten your maternal and paternal haplogroups done and what information has that given you. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep digging. And this has kind of told me to look at my dad, dad's side and that that is where um, this side of the family has that North African Egyptian heritage. And so I'm going to just keep digging on that side and see what I find. So let me know what you think. And we will talk soon.